Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston. Welcome to lecture 33 of Introductory Linear Algebra. Today's video is gonna be a short one because we only have one new concept to get through that's called the nullity of a matrix. And we're gonna see that the nullity, it can actually be obtained very quickly from the rank of a matrix. So if you know everything that you need to know about the rank of a matrix, you can use it to get the nullity, okay? So in a sense, there's not much more to say. All right, but what is the nullity of a matrix? Well, the nullity of a matrix, it's the dimension of the null space of that matrix. So remember we showed that the null space of a matrix is a subspace, so it makes sense to talk about its dimension. Well, that dimension we call the nullity of the matrix, okay? And I mean, another way of thinking about it is just sort of trace the definitions together. It's the dimension of the solution set of this linear system AX equals zero, okay? So remember, like that linear system there, it might have a unique solution, the all zeros vector, in which case, you know, the null space is just that vector, so it has dimension zero. In that case, if there's a unique solution, the nullity is zero, okay? But that linear system might also have infinitely many solutions. Well, if that infinitely many solutions is a line, nullity is one. If that infinitely many solutions is a plane, nullity is two, and so on. The nullity is the dimension of that solution set. It's the dimension of the null space. Okay, and the way to think about nullity is it sort of measures how degenerate that matrix is. It sort of measures how much stuff is getting squashed down. Okay, so if, if it's squashing everything down just to the zero vector, then the nullity is gonna be n. It's sort of squashing all n dimensions just into the zero vector. If it's squashing nothing down, okay, if the matrix is invertible, we're gonna see that the nullity is zero. It's sort of not squashing any dimensions down. Okay, so sort of intuitively, it feels like this is very complementary to the rank. Remember the rank, it, we thought of it as a measure of non-degeneracy of the matrix. It sort of measured how much information was being kept by that matrix. Well, nullity is doing the opposite. It's sort of measuring how much stuff is being squashed away. How many dimensions are being lost when you multiply by the matrix A? Okay, so, well, time for our big theorem for today's class, and it just sort of captures this idea. It captures the fact that rank and nullity of a matrix, they're complementary to each other in a sense. Okay, so suppose you've got any matrix A, and the important dimension here is gonna be how many columns does it have? So it's gonna be N is the important number to keep in mind for this theorem. You've got any matrix A with N columns, then the rank of that matrix plus the nullity of that matrix equals N, okay? So in other words, sort of if you add up how much non-degeneracy a matrix has with how much degeneracy it has, you always get the same number, okay? So you can compute the rank or nullity from the other one straightforwardly, okay? And the where this comes from is if we scroll back up to the theorem that we saw in the previous lecture video, we learned that the rank of a matrix was equal to the number of leading columns in any row echelon form of that matrix. So we're gonna use that in the proof of this theorem about nullity, okay? So remember, the rank of a matrix is the number of leading columns in a row echelon form of A. Okay, but now if we remember that there's a natural correspondence between the columns of a matrix and the variables in a linear system, then we, then we can sort of stitch this together and talk about the rank of a matrix in terms of a linear system, and that's gonna be useful for us. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna notice that, hey, yeah, rank of A is the number of leading columns but the number of leading columns, that's exactly the number of leading variables in this linear system AX equals zero. Okay, so that's another way of thinking about the rank. It's the number of leading variables in a linear system AX equals zero. Okay, but the nullity of a matrix, we can also think of it in a similar way. The nullity of a matrix, it's the number of free variables in that exact same linear system AX equals zero. And the reason for this is if you go back up to our example where we computed a basis of the null space of a matrix, what we did was we sort of factored out the solution set until we had free variable times vector plus free variable times vector. And then we took those vectors and we claimed that, you know, you put those together, that makes a basis of the null space, okay? So how many vectors are there? Well, there's one for each free variable, okay? So that's the dimension of the null space. That's the size of the basis. In other words, that's the nullity. The nullity is the number of free variables in this linear system AX equals zero. Okay, and then you just use the fact that, hey, every single variable is either a free variable or a leading variable. And how many variables are there all together? Well, there's n of them. Okay, so if you add up these two quantities, you've got to get this quantity. Number of free variables plus number of leading variables equals total number of variables. In other words, rank plus nullity is n. Okay, it's the number of columns. 
Okay, so let's go through an example now of actually computing the nullity of a matrix. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this matrix A that we saw in the previous video. We already computed the rank of this matrix. So now using this rank nullity theorem, we're gonna be able to compute the nullity of this matrix very easily. Okay, so remember from the previous video that a row echelon form of this matrix is this guy down here. Okay, and we said, hey, the, the rank of this matrix is two because there's two non-zero rows or equivalently, there's two leading columns here. Okay, well, if we plug this into sort of that rank nullity formula, remember the rank plus nullity has to equal n, the number of columns, just sub in what we know. Rank is two, n is five, right? Number of columns is five. So just rearrange and solve for the nullity. Ah, nullity's gotta be three. Okay, so the nullity of this matrix is three. And there's another way that you could see this, okay? Looking at this row echelon form here, you just count up the number of non-leading columns, okay? In other words, you count up the number of free variables in the associated linear system, right? There's one, two, three free variables in that linear system, so the nullity is three. All right, good times. Let's round out this week with one final characterization of invertibility, okay? This has been sort of an ongoing theme over the last three weeks now. Everything in this course is related to invertibility of a matrix, and pretty much everything that we introduce can be rephrased back in terms of invertibility. There's gonna be a theorem that says, hey, a matrix is invertible if and only if something involving the new concept, okay? And the new concepts for this week were rank and nullity of a matrix, and yeah, there is a characterization of invertibility in terms of these two characterizations. And they come immediately from previous characterizations that we saw, okay? So remember, a matrix was invertible if and only if its range was all of Rn, okay? It was all of n-dimensional space. Well, another way of phrasing that is a matrix is invertible if and only if its range is n-dimensional. Well, that's exactly equivalent to saying that a matrix is invertible if and only if its rank is n, okay? So that's one of our new characterizations of invertibility. And the other one is just the nullity version of it. Whenever you have a characterization of something in terms of rank, you have an equivalent one in terms of nullity just because of this rank nullity theorem that we just saw, okay? We know that for any matrix, rank and nullity must add up to the number of columns, so they gotta add up to n. So rank of A is n if and only if nullity of A is zero. Okay, so that's also equivalent to invertibility. A matrix is invertible if and only if its nullity is zero. And this relates back to sort of our geometric interpretation of invertibility that we talked about earlier. We said that a matrix is invertible if and only if it sort of doesn't squash away any information, okay? It sort of doesn't squash any, any dimensions away, okay? And that's exactly what this is saying, okay? Think of the nullity as how many dimensions are squashed away by that matrix. Well, a matrix is invertible if zero dimensions are squashed by that matrix. Okay, and think of the rank of a matrix as measuring sort of how many dimensions of information are kept by that matrix. Well, a matrix is invertible if and only if it keeps all n dimensions of information. It doesn't squash any of them away. Alrighty, so that does it for this week. That does it for the rank and nullity of a matrix. I'll see you next week when we start talking about the determinants of a matrix. So see you then.